Hey guys, it's Kirk Sane here, and this is going to be the first video in a series where we're going to explain CAD and how to use the CAD software SOLIDWORKS. So what is CAD? CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So essentially we're going to be building a robot in a computer or in a computer file. Um, and what is the purpose of this or why is this important? Because we're going to be building, you know, physically and our robot's going to be competing physically. What's the point of using CAD? One benefit of using CAD is figuring out all the spacing issues on our robot. So for example, when you go ahead and build, often you'll, you'll make a decision with regards to maybe one part of the drivetrain and that'll affect maybe your mechanism later on. So by using CAD, we can figure out all of the errors in our design. Uh, another benefit of using CAD is 3D printing. So naturally, if you want to create custom parts, you need a platform where you can create those custom parts. And before you actually print them, you need to design them first. And we're going to be using CAD to do that. So those are the two purposes of using CAD. Now we're going to explain some additional advantages of using CAD. So the first advantage of using CAD is the fact that the judges appreciate that when you use CAD, you're going through a more rigorous engineering process as opposed to when you're just sitting down and starting and building off the top of your head. So by using CAD, we can properly plan out how a robot's gonna look beforehand and then build it. Another added benefit of using CAD is that our designs will be a lot better. So for example, uh, we had a season last year where we didn't use CAD and so it turned out like a lot of our designs weren't matching up So we had a lot of wonk related pieces um, And we just had things kind of flying everywhere and overall, you know, the build quality of it wasn't the best Whereas if you use CAD you can figure out where those wonk related pieces will be and you can make them proper and straight And you can figure out all of the spacing and make sure that there are going to be no errors in your design So by CADing the robot first as we say CADing uh, just means by creating it in CAD first you can figure out all the issues and your process of designing the robot is going to be much more rigorous and it's going to be a lot better when you actually complete the final product. And the third benefit of using CAD, and this is particular to SOLIDWORKS, is that you know for your future STEM careers hopefully, CAD is very essential. So regardless of if you're in you know mechanical engineering, even if you're in civil engineering, um, to some extent even software engineering and electrical engineering, you're going to need to use CAD first to design all of the parts and pieces that are required in an assembly. So you can think of an example if you were to create a conveyor belt you know, for a company. Uh, a lot of that needs to be designed in CAD first to make sure that it's A-OK -okay for uh, production and then the production line will go ahead. So as engineers or as future engineers hopefully, um, using CAD now will give you sort of that platform to maybe understand things a bit later on better. Uh, so it's quite a good introduction um, and in general it's just a good STEM skill. So as we mentioned before, the CAD software we're going to be using is called SOLIDWORKS. So what exactly is SOLIDWORKS? SOLIDWORKS is this CAD software and it's kind of like the industry standard for in terms of like what people actually use to design parts and pieces in real life. So for example, with the conveyor example, if there was a company, they would use SOLIDWORKS to create that um, and then provide it to you know their client. Uh, and then the client would say, yep, that's a good design and they could move on into production. So SOLIDWORKS is quite frequently used in actual industries and this is an added benefit to why we're using it. Another benefit is that SOLIDWORKS is actually free for all FTC teams. So um, also FRC teams and I think to some extent other uh, like VEX Robotics and other you know tournaments as well. So as an FTC team, uh, we're going to be using SOLIDWORKS uh, and it's going to be free for us as students. So that's really awesome. Uh, and we'd like to also thank SOLIDWORKS for providing this service for us uh, and sponsoring our team, I guess. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the SOLIDWORKS software and we're going to start actually ironing out sort of what things look like in there uh, and how we're going to do things. Okay, so I've got my desktop open and I'm now going to navigate to SOLIDWORKS. So this is the first time I'm opening SOLIDWORKS, so it could take a while. Um, just while it's loading, I'll go through a couple of things. So the first thing you'll need is a mouse. So to navigate through SOLIDWORKS, uh, it's quite hard to do it via the trackpad. So getting a mouse is pretty important, so make sure you have one ready. So now as you can see, uh, the screen says SOLIDWORKS product activation, uh, and it asks me what I want to do. So you have a couple of options here. This is the first time I've downloaded it on this laptop, so I'm not really sure how the system is going to work. That's why I'd like to activate it later, and I've got 30 days um, to activate it within. So you can kind of use this free trial and then once you're ready to go, you can activate um, your serial code and everything will go through. So I'll press that and I'll press finish and it'll continue loading up. So just with the network preferences um, and the system preferences. For SOLIDWORKS, one of the things that we'll need to do is make sure our laptop or you know desktop 
um, it's got the correct system specifications. So if you go on the SOLIDWORKS website, it'll give you a bunch of different specifications and um, a lot of them are highly rated, you know, kind of top of their end range laptops, um, 16 gigabytes of RAM, graphics card, this type of thing. So for you guys, because you're mainly students, you probably won't have those preferences. So what I recommend is actually just try using SOLIDWORKS and see what happens. And then you can use your 30 days. If it's not good, then you can just cancel it and you won't be wasting one of those licenses. Um, so just have a go. For reference, I'm using uh, a laptop from five years ago. It's got eight gigs of RAM and it's got a discrete graphics card um, from five years ago. So it's not, you know, top of the range. It's probably in the middle. Probably something that you guys are probably using as well. Um, so that should be good. So now that I'm here, this is the first time I've opened up SOLIDWORKS and this is what you'll see. So we'll go through this whole interface and we'll never get through all of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to close this part here. Uh, so to close it, if we could just hit this and we'll just move it to the side. So what that'll do is that won't come in our way because we won't really use most of this sidebar. Um, now what we'll do is we'll hit home and as you hit home, you'll see there are a bunch of different things going on. So I'll briefly explain through most of it. So the first thing you'll see is new, and then you'll see three different types of files you can open. So you can open a part file, an assembly file, and a drawing file. So a part file, like it sounds, it's basically just one single part that you can create in SOLIDWORKS. So for example, if you wanted, if you wanted to create like a hex shaft, um, just a singular one, you can create it in a part file. If you then want to use those parts to create an assembly, for example, if you want to assemble your robot together, then you would use an assembly file. So unlike a part file, assembly files can handle multiple parts. Um, and it's made up of different parts that you may have made, or also depending on which kit of parts you have, whether it's from Rev, GoBuilder, Actobotics, or Tetrix, um, those companies will provide you part files where you can then assemble your robot in. The last one is a drawing. So this is a very technical engineering kind of thing. Um, the best way to explain a drawing is to see kind of what an engineering drawing is. So I'll throw one up on the screen now. And as you can see, it's basically a 2D sketch uh, of a certain part. And it's got all of the um, kind of 2D dimensions labeled on it. And this kind of helps for production. Um, there may be some applications for FTC, but for now, we'll probably just focus on parts, which is going to be the first video after this. And then the second video is going to be on assemblies. So that's kind of the process of what we're going to do. Just to explain it with our motives, so parts you'll probably use to create custom parts and pieces for your robot, uh, whereas assemblies you'll probably use it to create your robot beforehand to figure out all of the spacing. So you need to be able to know how to use part files and assembly files. Uh, the good thing is they're quite interchangeable and they're pretty much the same. So uh, lastly you have recent documents and recent folders. Because this is the first time I've opened that up, you'll see nothing here. Um, but that's pretty much about it. There's not too much else to do with SOLIDWORKS. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a new part file. And as you can see, the first time you open it up, you'll see this screen right here, units and standard dimensions. So for this, depending on where you live, you'll probably choose um, M M MMGS or IPS. So because we're in Australia and we use millimeters, we're going to use MMGS. Um, for grams and seconds, because this is SOLIDWORKS, you can also do things that have motion and weight. So that's why grams and seconds are there. But for now, we're just going to be using millimeters. So just keep it on MMGS. And then for standard dimensions, just keep it on BSI. Um, there's no need to kind of change that around. So press OK. And it'll take a while to load again, depending on how fast or slow your computer is. Um, so we'll just let it load and we'll see how fast it takes to come up. OK, so that didn't take too long. The only thing is the fans are kicking up, but hopefully that's not too much of an issue. So. This is the interface we're going to be using to create parts, right? I've opened up a new part file, it's called part one. Um, and now, as you can see, there's a lot going on here, both at the top and on the side. So you shouldn't really be too intimidated by what's going on because we'll just use what's necessary to us. So in this video, I'm just going to be explaining briefly uh, the interface and how to use it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit this front plane button. So hit this front plane button and then press the show, okay? Then hit this top plane, Press show. Lastly, hit right plane and press show. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to show us the three planes that we can now draw on. So because this is SOLIDWORKS, everything is going to be done in 3D. So you can see down here as well, the X, Y, Z axis. Uh, in school, you're probably um, 
quite clear what the x and y axis that's the two-dimensional Cartesian plane but in 3d we have three axes so we have the additional z axis now you don't really need to worry about this down here because we're going to be working in this right here so you can see there's a right plane a front plane and a top plane now right now I'm orbiting the whole um, the whole model so to do that get your mouse and click this middle button here <clears throat> Once you click the middle button, you can kind of just move it around and you can see what's going on um, all around there. Now, if you want to zoom out, just zoom out with your mouse and then zoom in. Um, so those are the two main things you need your mouse for. So for example, if you really want to focus in on this corner of the top plane, just zoom out and then you know press it and then zoom in and you'll focus in on that corner. Similarly, uh, if you kind of want to move to another corner, just orbit around and go there. So this is probably quite new. Um, if you haven't used any 3D modeling softwares before, uh, this is probably a bit of like a jarring experience to be able to move around kind of this fast. Um, but don't worry about it too much. You'll, as you'll use SolidWorks, you'll get accustomed to that. So in the next video, we're going to be going over parts and how to use them to create custom pieces for your robot. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next video.